You're listening to a message presented at New Market Christian Church. We're located at 300 South 3rd Street in New Market, Indiana. We meet for Sunday school at 9 o'clock and for worship at 10 o'clock each Sunday morning. If you do not have a church home, we'd love to invite you to join us here at New Market Christian Church. And now, a message by Dr. Gary Snowden. I decided I was going to tell you a story, and I don't even think I need this because it's my story. Um, many, many years ago in a far, far away land called Kentucky, there's this little skinny, wiry guy that was walking along the edge of a bush. And on the other side of that bush was the back door to this I don't know what else to call it except tar paper house. You know what I mean? Boards with tar paper over the outside. And there is this little 12 year old girl that walked to that door and she threw the dishwater over the bush. And when it landed on the other side, it was all over this wiry little hillbilly who went around to see what in the world had just hit him and saw a little 12 year old girl at that point, he was 22. And he fell in love with that little 12-year-old girl, even though he was 22. And they got married. Over a lot of complaints from his parents. Because this little girl's father was a known alcoholic in the community. And he was a good one. He was my grandfather. And he was kind of like Otis on the Andy Griffith Show. He was always just a pleasant drunk. Uh, you, you have all kinds. Well, they complained and they complained and they didn't like it much. But Dad loved her and he knew that she was sick and that she was going to have to have some things done. And they had w talked back and forth and I won't go into all that, but he ended up marrying her. And then he was working out digging post holes to make a living. And he told me back then he got 10 cents a post hole to dig post holes. He said a dollar went a lot farther back then. He went out and he dug post holes all week, but the thing that made it so interesting was his own father had gotten drunk the week before, and they were out with something called a buzz saw, cutting down briars and thistles and small trees, and his father, not being of right mind because of alcohol, pushed that buzz saw over his foot and cut off all his toes but his big one. And they had to go sew all those back on. He went out with that foot all bandaged up because he was married now and needed to provide for his wife and he dug post holes all week in order that he could take care of his family and he went to pick up his paycheck and lo and behold his dad had picked it up before him and taken it down to the bar and drank up all that he had worked for that week and that's when my dad decided to leave Kentucky and move to Indiana he contacted my uncle Red my great uncle Red and uh, he moved him up and helped him get established got him a job at the state highway and they tried to have kids for about three years or so, and they couldn't. And they got ready to adopt, and as they were getting ready to adopt, lo and behold, ta-da, I showed up on the scene. And I had a mom that had got married at 13 to a man that was 23 years old. And I grew up a little different than a lot of people. You know, some of their biggest arguments were over her watching too many cartoons during the day and not getting things done around the house. Well, as I began to grow into a man, I watched my father work his hands literally to the bone. He would go to a factory. He decided he couldn't make enough money, didn't have any insurance with the, the, the job he had, so he went into a factory making caskets. And he would go there and work all day long at, at the factory. And he would come home and we ran a junkyard for a place called DNR Auto Sales. We would tear parts out and we would sell parts and we would work on cars and they also ran a race car so every Friday night and Saturday we'd be at the race tracks, uh, uh, dirt tracks back then running the race cars and I, I didn't get to run the race cars. What I spent my time doing as a kid, it, it was a lot different back then. While he was down at the pits working on the cars and mom was down to getting drinks and things for all the guys and doing what they do down in the pits, 
I was underneath the bleachers because you know what I discovered? People sit in the bleachers and change fall out of the, it falls out of their pocket. So I would go around underneath the bleachers and I was looking for change and it was just a, a good life. I was growing up, uh, not a worry in the world, didn't realize we were poorer than church mouse. We, because we had a good life. We never lacked for anything. Dad made sure we had clothes on our back and we had food on the table. Uh, sometimes it was a little crispy, but uh, that wasn't my dad's fault. Uh, the bottom line is, I grew up with a father that loved me and that cared about me and that worked himself silly to make sure that I could have absolutely everything I needed. Uh, I was born on August 10, 1959. And then around July 3rd, 1979, I believe, I invited this girl's family over to the house, and I asked her dad if it would be okay to marry his daughter. And his response was, you're going to do it anyway, I don't see why you're asking me. I wasn't exactly sure how to take that, so we, we considered that a yes. And we got engaged, and we were married June 6, 1980. And uh, for a while, we were in college, and things were uh, going really well. Uh, we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do in life. I had uh, graduated, and I told my wife that she'd like to stay. I had a job at traffic control, was preaching on the weekends. I could stay and work there. She could finish school. And she said, I'm a music major. I can be a music minister at a church where you are, whether I have a degree or not. So she was about a year short of getting her degree, and she decided that we would go ahead and go into ministry. We moved over to a little place called Ben Davis Creek in Rushville, Indiana, and we started our first full-time ministry. We had a part-time ministry through college, but we started our first full-time ministry. And then on August 6th, 1983, something happened to me that had never, ever happened before. But it did happen two times afterwards. I don't know if you know what happened in 1983, August 6th or not. But on that day, I became a father. This little girl was born. Her name, name was Sarah Renee Snowden. And we would tease her, Sarah Renee Snowden, all the time that she was growing up. And you know what? Whenever I go to buy... Have you ever bought anything that needed to be put together? You know, like Ikea, you got to put it all together, all the instructions. Pages and pages and pages of instructions. You get a whole book to put together a TV stand. But whenever they sent me home with that baby, they gave me nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all to tell me how to raise that baby. Now, I had the Word of God, and I knew I was supposed to teach the Word of God to that child whenever I was sitting down, whenever I was standing up, whenever I was laying down, whenever I was walking along the way. I, I knew that was my responsibility as a parent, but I didn't know anything about babies. Especially baby girls. I mean, what do girls like? I mean, what do you do with them? I, I didn't know. But I, all at once, was a father. And I may have not known what I was doing, but I loved that little girl with all of my heart. And she began to grow. And I tell you, those first few weeks were rough. She had something called colic. Have you ever heard of colic? I don't know what it is, but the only thing I found that helped is I would put my hand on her belly and lay her legs back through here. And back then I could do this. I would bounce her like this on my hand, and it made her tummy feel better. And that was what I did many nights, just bouncing that little baby girl. Not because it was easy to bounce her, but because it made her feel better, and I loved her, and I wanted to do anything I could to take care of her. I raised her, I taught her right from wrong, and then uh, around uh, July 4th, 1986, doggone if I didn't have another one. And it, just to make it a mess, instead of being a girl, it was a boy. So I had to learn something completely new again. 
There's some things I learned about boys that I didn't learn about girls. You have to protect yourself when you're changing a diaper with the boy. You didn't have to do that with a girl. There's a lot of things I learned. Fatherhood's just different. Uh, you, you don't know what you're getting into, but you're doing the best you can. And then God's sense of humor. In 1996, doggone if I didn't get another one. I don't know what was going on, but I thought, God, thanks for the blessing. Not a mistake, not an accident, but a blessing. Three times, three children, Sarah, Ben, and Beth. And I have the honor of calling them my children. And as I look at them, and as I experience life with them, I have to imagine what it's like to be God. They have taught me so much. They have taught me how I make God feel. My kids have not been perfect. They have made choices that broke my heart, made me cry literally day and night for days because of the choices they make. I have taught them better. I have tried to raise them in Christ. They made some bad choices. But the beautiful thing is they always turned back to God. They always came back to their roots because the roots had been planted deeply and firmly. I can just imagine from what I experienced when my children broke my heart what God must feel when I break his heart. I'm guessing that everyone sitting in a car here or hearing my voice has done something in their life that they know broke the heart of God. Maybe it's a lie that you told. Maybe it's something that you stole. Maybe it's something that you said that hurt somebody deeply. Maybe you were in a war someplace and you ended up killing a number of people and, and, and you're feeling overwhelmed by it and you're thinking, God, how could you love me? Or maybe it was a car accident, things that you didn't even have control over. God knows your heart. He knows what you're feeling. He knows when you've sinned. He knows when you're repentant. And here's the thing. When my children broke my heart and they came back to me and they said that they were sorry, and that they said that they knew they had failed God and they had failed me? Did I slap them with the side of the head and say, you stupid idiot? No, I didn't. I embraced them, and I forgave them, and I helped them get back on their feet and move forward from that point on. I am so thankful that my God does that for me. Whenever I mess up, I go to Him. I admit my failure. I let him know that I love him and that I want to live for him and he forgives me and he embraces me in his own way and I move forward. Here's the thing. We're told that every last one of us has sinned. It started way back in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve partook of that tree. It didn't take very long for Cain to kill Abel and it went downhill from there until finally the flood came and wiped out all but just a few that God had chosen. Over and over again, there's sin that brings about sorrow in the lives of people. Over and over again, God needs to forgive. He promised way back in Genesis, someone is coming. When Jesus arrived on this earth, that someone had come. He gave his life on Calvary so that we could be forgiven and be a part of the family of Almighty God. Someone is coming. Someone has come. And that someone has promised that he's coming again. And that someone is Jesus. The beautiful reality is, he came because God loved us before we ever thought about loving him. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the love of of the Father. That is the love of Jesus. I love my kids, but I've not had to die for any of them. I pretty much guarantee you, if it came down to their life or mine, I would die for them. Because that's what a father's love does. God loved us enough to come in the flesh and do for us what we could not do for ourselves. As we enjoy this Father's Day, we need to remember our dads. My dad and my mom are both gone, and many of you 
uh, the ages you are, your moms and dads are probably gone too. But we have those memories. Cling to them for all you are worth. Remember them and what they've taught you. Walk in the ways that they've trained you. If they've raised you in the Lord, they have done a wonderful thing for you. But in the end, remember that even when our earthly parents are gone, our Heavenly Father is walking with us. He loves us. And He promises never to leave us. There's nothing that can pluck us from His hand so long as we want to remain there. Continue to remain in the hand of God. And never forget, He loved you so much that He died for you. You've been listening to a message presented by Dr. Gary Snowden, minister at New Market Christian Church. We would love to have you come join us as we seek to worship God, love one another, and reach out to our neighbors.